Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another live stream. This is week two of 2024. Already, I am on day seven of Lion Diet, and I will be um, publishing my first week, my first seven day update tomorrow. I'm going to finish up talking about that today and then get you guys that update for tomorrow. If anyone's in here, how are you? How's your week been? How are you feeling? What are you thinking? Today, um, the topic is going to be based on, again, the poll of the week, which was just a very basic question, but I was curious to get your thoughts about the difference between influence and manipulation. I know for me, sometimes it feels like there's a very fine line between that, and we are in a world where we are constantly being influenced, right? All the stuff online, even conversations with just everyday people, there's always this little dance going on between people, right? And I think it's really, really fascinating. This is something that I have read a lot about and just tried to learn more about in my own life. And so I can do better at presenting myself and showing up as a person that I truly want to be, where my intentions match what's coming out of me. And that actually can be kind of hard sometimes, right? Because these are, some of this is natural to interact with people and to <clears throat> persuade or influence people to um, see things our way from whatever, like whatever the subject might be. But then there's that line right between when that crosses over into manipulation. And so I think it's a good topic to talk about because again, we are in a world where this is constantly happening and anybody who's on social media creating or consuming um, either way, it's just good to be aware of our own boundaries and where, where we are with that. And are we being influenced too much? Are we being manipulated? Are we doing that to other people, maybe not even realizing it? And so, um, uh, we'll say hi to everyone as you come in. Hey, Darren. Darren Earp. Good morning. He says, oh, yeah, I learned this last week. Good morning. Loving the new year. Birthday tomorrow. Hooray. Four months in now. Favorite part of our Sunday mornings. Awesome. Thanks for being in here. Your birthday's tomorrow. That's awesome. A January baby. Ellie's in here. Good morning. Good morning. If you hadn't seen um, last night, Ellie and I had a collaboration video. We did um, 10 tips on how to just kind of stop stressing out so much about an insane to-do list, how we structure our lives, but also maintain some flexibility. And we did part one on her channel and part two on my channel. So that was really fun. We had fun in the chat. Derek's here. Good morning. Good morning. So if anybody's following along in the weekly live stream journal, this is week two. And the first page on here is the brain dump page. So I thought we'd take just a couple minutes in the beginning while everybody's jumping in and I uh, will you know, be saying hi to everybody. And we can, you can use that either for just to like write out whatever you're thinking, just to get it out of your brain to kind of clear your head or we can, um, jump in, you can start writing about some of the questions related to the topic. So kind of the four main questions that I have written down that we're going to go through today as we look at the poll results and read some of your comments from there too, um, is how can we continue to navigate in a world of ever increasing influence? So that's kind of what I was talking about here just in the beginning. And how do we recognize like where the lines are, when it's too much, when am I making a decision or when is someone else influencing me to make a decision and I feel like it's not my decision anymore. So if you want to write a little bit about that, get your thoughts down and then we'll jump into the questions officially. Jojo's here. Good morning to my favorite ladies, Nia and Illy. <laughs> yep. Uh, little one will not be in the live stream today, but yep. She's here hanging out with her daddy. Ellie says, I'm looking forward to our topic today. Yay. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting topic and something I could probably, I have a bunch of notes that I've been putting together throughout the week. And so <clears throat> hopefully we'll, I'll be able to keep them somewhat organized. So the second kind of idea that I think 
is important here is how, you know, how can we stay true to ourselves and stay true to who we are while we're living in this world of influence all the time everywhere and everybody's kind of trying to stand out right whether it's on social media or in our careers anything that we're kind of out doing in the world you know we all want to stand out in some way and there's some caveats to that so i want to talk about that and we'll go through and define kind of what influence really does mean versus manipulation and you guys had some great thoughts in the comments on the poll that i think really does help draw these boundaries and lines between that. And then where is that line? So figuring out that line for us individually, where's that line between what I'm being influenced, how much am I allowing, and then am I allowing infl uh, manipulation to happen or am I manipulating someone without realizing it? And I think all those things are super interesting. So um, we'll just take a couple, like maybe 60 more seconds to for y'all to jot any notes down. And let's see, we got 12 people in here today. Yay. And I'll pull up the poll of the week. And we will see what you all responded. So uh, the question really was just literally the difference between what do you think the difference between manipulation and influence is? And the choices were Number one, same tactics, different intention by the person doing it. So it would be more up to the person who is doing the influencing or the manipulation, right, as to what that would be defined as. And the second choice was depends on the receiver. So how it's interpreted. How is this person making me feel? How does the situation make me feel? How does the information make me feel? Is there, you know, is that part of it? And then the third option was no difference really at all between the two. And we got 70 votes in this week. And by far, 81% of you chose the first option, same tactics, different intention. 10% chose depends on the receiver, how it's being interpreted. Excuse me. Club soda. And then 9% said no difference, really. And we got some good comments here that I think are going to really inform all these questions that we're talking about today. So, okay. If any, if y'all did your brain dumps or you can, maybe we should do them before I did mine before I went live with you today. So just kind of helps me get ready. And I got this new stand, you guys, what do you think? Does it look weird? This was the only way I could configure it to kind of be at the right spot. So it, it looks like a robot arm sticking in here, which I'm not a fan of, but I have space on my desk now, whereas last week I had like books, it stacked on top of books and it, my audio went out and it was a mess. So Sarah's in here. Good morning. Good morning, heart. Happy Sunday. Okay. So let's jump right in to kind of the first question of defining what it means to have influence or to be influenced versus being manipulated. And I'm going to go to your comments too after I read the formal definitions, because I think you guys had some good ones. So according to, you know, the first definition that pops up on Google, um, influence, it means uh, formally the capacity to have an effect on the character, the development, or the behavior of someone or something, or the effect itself. So influencing would be the effect itself. So the capacity to have an effect on someone else's character, their development, or behavior. And I think that's a pretty good definition, right? That could apply to any like books you're reading, for an example. That has an influence on how you think and potentially your behaviors or your habits or your character. Having conversations with your friends or family might constitute influence, right? Like anything that you are engaging in a back and forth with someone else or potentially something else, like nature could be an example even of influence, right? It influences your mood when you're spending time in nature and maybe you're not used to doing that and you're getting out into a new environment and you're getting away from all the cares of the world and you can be influenced by the breeze or the feeling of the sun on your face or the, you know, the beauty of the scene that you're looking at. So I think the first thing to, to understand that I always come back to is like recognizing that 
influence is always happening. It's it's happening in every little interaction with every person and every scenario that I'm in. There's always like an input and an output. There's a giving and receiving and everything. And so just kind of laying that as a foundation, I think is good because probably in the past, I thought, oh, I'm not being influenced. Oh, I'm not influencing anyone. Oh, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just being here. I'm just saying this. It doesn't really matter. But over time, I've learned that I think it really does. Like, I think it's always happening to different degrees versus the definition of manipulation or to manipulate someone or something is to control or influence a person or situation cleverly, unfairly, or unscrupulously. And I had to relook up the definition of scrupulous or unscrupulous because I didn't quite remember what that meant. And that means having or showing no moral principles, not being honest or fair. So here kind of leads to the, the difference, which is kind of the idea of intent, right? You can see in the definition of manipulation that control, like and the words cleverly, unfairly, or unscrupulously involve that two party, right? Like there's something that's not balanced about it. And that's a lot of what you all pointed out in the comments on the poll. So Joshua Pearson, 9950 said, I feel like influence is earned through the investment of time and building a healthy connection with someone. Manipulation involves coercion using guilt tactics or gaslighting. I agree. I think that's present here when we look at the definitions because um, influence feels more reciprocal in a way, right? It's like, hey, I'm interacting with this person. I'm interacting with this environment. There's that give and take. There's that pull and push happening. And there's two parties involved, right? Versus manipulation feels a lot more like Joshua was saying coercion or using guilt and it's an, in an effort to or with an intent to control somebody unfairly almost like without them realizing it or without them knowing or being able to make the decision ready to roam 2504 says depends on whether it is done in a narcissistic way or the normal give and take in a normal relationship negative versus positive perfect, perfect explanation. I think that's a, there's a normal give and take that we can feel that we're all, we're both influencing each other. But then if someone's like only in it for themselves in a narcissistic way, that changes the balance. Um, Chris Gentry, 4427 says people can be influenced. uh, Sorry, people can be influenced by people they want to be like or look up to. I think that's very true. They can also be manipulated by those same people. But I feel people can only be manipulated by people they don't know. They have no connection with those people, so they don't lend any weight to what they are doing or the products they are trying. Influence needs some sort of connection. Manipulation doesn't. Hmm, that's interesting. I might push back on that a little just because I have a personal experience with um, what I would call, you know, pretty blatant manipulation. Um with someone that I did know very well, with someone that I had, you know, a pretty long relationship with, you know, or a span of time where I thought I knew that person pretty well. And then it was like a light switch almost where I realized this person's been lying to me, you know, this whole time, or this person was really like planning this whole other thing behind the scenes. And I just didn't pick up on it, you know, and and that's happened to me. And so Um, that's actually one of the reasons why I got really obsessed with studying a lot of this stuff is because I was so blown away that I didn't, you know, I trusted that person and got hurt by it that I thought I want to understand why this happened, you know, and how I can prevent that from happening. But I do agree that, um, it's, you can have manipulation or influence, from like an idol figure or a role model figure, right? Someone that you want to be more like or look up to. And that's what we're going to kind of discuss too, is like, how do you know when you are like trying to model a behavior that you want to emulate, that you want to move into versus trying to change yourself to be that person specifically and, and not having a clear sense of who you are in that whole situation. So, um, Ellie says, that's so funny. I like the robot arm. Looks professional. <laughs> yeah, right? It, it does. I I have a weird um, thing about robots, so I'm not, I don't know. I like how it feels. 
I like that it's out of the way, definitely. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Jojo says, borderline personality disorders and manipulation go hand in hand. Yes. And I was actually reading up on this yesterday, just kind of refreshing myself with some of the terms because I'm not like a psychology expert by any means, but I do, I'm very interested in that and kind of, you know, things to look out for, things to know about, like, you know, I just find all this stuff really interesting. And yes, so that in those situations, you know, in personal relationships, things like that, where, you know, the person is almost incapable of feeling empathy or compassion for the other person. It's, it's like very, I think what I, I was reading about narcissistic personality disorder or something like that. Um, so yeah, definitely be watching out for that. Um, let's see. The Graham 9207 says manipulate contains an element of lying or withholding of information. Influencing should be, should base itself on information as the influencer understands the world. I think that's a great distinction too. Again, it says the person doing the manipulating has the intention to deceive or lie or cheat or coerce any of the, any of the above and using tactics kind of like Jojo was mentioning in these personality disorders, there are specific tactics that people will employ to be covert about it so that it's not very obvious and you um, won't really see it coming. And then Grimm's by Mariners says, I believe it's personal responsibility on both sides. And I definitely agree with that too. I think there's an element to like pretty much what we're doing right now learning about human behavior, learning about other people, learning to be better communicators, putting ourselves in different situations so we can experience different, you know, different people, different things happening, and then learning from those experiences, right? And so if I can look back and think about some negative experiences that I've had with people where I felt like I was manipulated or I was heavily influenced maybe to do something that I didn't truly want to do, instead of looking back and blaming those people now or, oh, that person was so terrible. It's like, this is also something that is, has been in this new NLP book I've been listening to, which is a controversial presupposition of NLP, but it's that essentially all behaviors are done because they solve a person's need or because they had a, a good intention to start. And maybe that could be a topic for another video, but that's when I've struggled with because I thought there's no way that people could be having a good intention, like in the past situation that I could think of. But, you know, from that person's perspective, it's solving a problem for them. It's fulfilling a need that they have. And so just understanding all this stuff and learning how to kind of just, just build up our own, I hate to use the word ego, but that's kind of like we've talked about in past videos too, having that good balanced ego where you are capable of being confident, assertive, standing up for yourself, you know, ha maintaining boundaries. I think that's that's what I like to focus on because I think that that's the best defense for some of the, you know, the negativity and the, the manipulation that does go on. So I kind of want to keep it focused in like the media, the online space, because the whole reason I thought about this topic to begin with was because I use the term influencer to describe myself in... Uh, I think my five month carnivore update video. And, you know, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of that word, but I thought, well, that's kind of the term that everyone uses, right? And everyone knows what that means. And then I thought, well, do we really know what it means? And then I thought about this video topic. So, um, Jay Haggard's in here. Hi, everyone. Hello. Happy Sunday. And so that's kind of where I want to go with this next is. Um, so thanks everyone who contributed to the poll. I really enjoy hearing your thoughts and seeing what you guys are thinking. It gives me good ideas to for things to talk about. Um, so kind of like we talked about in the beginning, recognizing that we're always being influenced, right? Or we are always doing some form of influencing, whether that's personal conversations we're having, books we're reading, music and the lyrics in that music. That's a big one. Um, you know, I actually recently found some music on my, um, like an, I found an old playlist from an old Google account and it was like songs I'd listened to in high school and all this stuff. And I listened to it and I thought it's so interesting, right? The lyrics in those songs 
and like the mindset that I was in at the time. And they, they went right along with each other, you know? So I don't know if the music influenced me or if my state influenced the music that I chose. Maybe it was a little bit of both, right? This give and take thing, but that's always something to pay attention to. Like, what are the lyrics in the music you're listening to? Media, like regular media, um, when you're walking through the store, marketing, advertising, products, all this kind of stuff. We just went through one of the most commercial seasons of the year, the whole holiday season, you know, just being aware of that stuff. Social media, of course. Um, and that's where I got the idea for this is like, am I an influencer? Am I influencing people? What does that really mean? That's good to think about family and friends even. And then I love the quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, right? That's a quote that's talking about influence because the five people that you surround yourself with, whether that's friends, family, or in today's day and age, I consider that like who you follow online, whose content you're consuming a lot of, um, the books you're reading, the, the audible or podcasts that you're listening to, like whatever you're doing consistently, what you're surrounding yourself with the most that influences you and you are going to become the average of that. And I think that's really powerful because that's, something that we can change at any time, right? We can seek out new friendships. We can seek out new activities that might put us in an environment to make new friends. If that's something that you feel like you need to do, we can always go online and change the content that we're listening to, right? We can go online and find anybody really on any niche, any topic at all that you want to learn more about. You want to absorb more of that energy into your personality. We talked about core values and goal setting and all this stuff in, in previous live streams, like, and how you can allow that influence to come in and feed that motivation for you and feed that whatever it is you want to grow in through social media. And that's what I love about it. Um, but it also works the opposite way, right? So if we are listening to music with really negative lyrics and we're reading books that just are not feeding our minds in the right way, and we're speaking in our conversations in a way that's maybe very um, selfish or, again, narcissistic is a strong word, but we all have a little bit of that to some degree, right? And that can fluctuate depending on all these other things like our nutrition and our stress levels and all these things that we talk about, which is why I love the whole the holistic aspect of this, starting with nutrition as our foundation and then looking at all these other things. Um, so whatever, let's say the five biggest influences or the five biggest inputs that you have around you, whether they're physical people in your life or people online or in the social media digital space, that's what you're going to be the average of. And those are things we can examine. That's probably the easiest place to start, right, is looking at that and saying, am, am I really choosing this or did, did they choose this or are they influencing me, you know, to be a part of this or to stay in this friend group or to stay in this community and I'm not really choosing that, right? And those are just even just asking those simple questions can, can lead you down to, okay, should I change something here or not? Um, Kevin, good morning. Keep up the great work and content. Good morning. Thank you. Glad you're here. Um, so does anyone have thoughts on that? Anybody have thoughts on... Just the idea that, you know, we live in an energetic world and there's always a flux. There's always a giving and taking. There's always influence happening at all times. And kind of the next point then is, you know, what do we do about that? And kind of like I, I pointed out just a little bit ago, what I like to primarily focus on is what can I do within myself to build up my own character, to build up my own confidence, build up my own bound, like knowing where my boundaries are and being assertive with those, because I think that's initially the best defense against that crossing over into that line of feeling like you've been manipulated or feeling like you've been coerced into doing something. Excuse me. I've got club soda here. <laughs> it makes me burp. Um, or feeling like you were lied to and you didn't pick up on it kind of thing. And, you know, just to be clear, I don't ever feel like it's appropriate to guilt yourself or beat yourself up if something like that happens to you. Like in the example that I brought up, I really trusted that person in my life at that time. And that really hurt me, you know, to feel like I was 
you know, outright lied to and, and manipulated. But what I tried to do is learn from that and say, okay, what were the red flags that I didn't pick up on? When, you know, looking back with 2020, where where could I have seen, you know what, this isn't really right. Where could I have felt that? I really believe this is kind of the first point of what we can do about it is to work on that connection with your intuition, that gut feeling that often is right and um, precludes like the rational part of our brains figuring it out, right? It's it's the hairs that stand up on the back of your neck when you're walking home and you feel like I shouldn't go that way. And you, you can't really explain it. You can't really rationalize it, but it's something that is a sense. It's one of those sort of primal instincts that helps guide our decision making and keeps us safe and keeps us guarded against people that do have bad intentions, people that are out to manipulate. And so I really have worked hard on that aspect of connecting deeper with my intuition, listening to it, listening to it and honoring it by taking action when I do feel it. And then it's kind of like a little experiment, right? It's like, okay, start with something small and I'll do this with parking spaces, for example. I will play this little game with myself where I'm if I'm driving around the parking garage or parking like trying to find parking at a at a park to take my kid to um, I will say okay do I and it usually is very busy right so there's not a lot of open spaces so I will try to see like if I can pick up on where which corner I'm going to go around where's the space that's where I'm supposed to park. Where's the next open space? And it sounds kind of stupid, but I will play that little game sometimes and just see if I can pick up on any intuition. And sometimes I'm right. And actually, I'm, I say like 60% of the time, my gut will tell me like, oh, you can park over here. You know, so like you can play these little games with yourself to just kind of see like, where are you with your intuition? Can you pick up on any of these little signals that are, that are going on? Um, I'll jump in and read Ellie's comment here. She says, I'm a person who's easily influenced by others, an emotional sponge and a people pleaser. I've had to become a person with a shield, but I don't always keep it up. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And I thank you for sharing that because I've definitely been that person too. And that's kind of like the example that I was bringing up about, you know, the time where I felt very manipulated and it's, it's because I was, um, kind of being an emotional, I was leaning into my emotions too hard and I was ignoring some of the signals that were coming up in my brain or in, I guess in my gut more like as red flags. And so this is, um, this is that balance, right? And I hope that, you know, we can all learn from these past experiences and things and grow from them because it can be really hard, um, to be kind of having that people pleaserness about you. And I've, I've definitely been there and I've really had to learn how to like technically learn how to establish boundaries, be clear for myself what those are. And that's kind of what I want to talk about next too. So thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like I have a thro frog in my throat ever since I started the lion diet. Anyone else have that? <clears throat> I'm going to talk about that tomorrow though. Um, so yeah, getting in touch with our intuition, I think, and whatever way that feels best for you to do, I think it's good to just practice that and then, um, honoring it by acting on it and then seeing what the outcome is and then saying, okay, just, it's like getting to know yourself again on that intuitive level. Right. And then saying, like, I also do this with picking out clothes, just something that's su super benign that doesn't really actually have any effect on an important decision that I make. But just to kind of see, like, I'll walk into my closet and try to not think about what I want to wear. I will just look and try to go with my first gut impulse, like try to recognize it's like, what do I want to wear today? That, you know, and like stop thinking about it and just pick that out and then like base my outfit off of that. And that's kind of a fun way to do it is just to try to because I read I heard about this study once that they they had people come in and I'm probably butchering this, but they had like two groups and they each group had a rack, a clothing rack and they had five like white identical shirts. They were the exact same shirt, same brand, same size, same everything. And one group was said um, was told to like put them in order of 
best to worst and someone and or like which one's your favorite to least favorite and then the other group was said like just pick your favorite one something like that and it was really interesting how people in the first group would go and like what's the difference and they would find these differences between them and they were thinking and they would mix and match and oh no I think I like this the tone of this one better this one's a little more crisp and they would put them in order of what they thought was the best to the worst and then the other group just had to kind of pick their favorite. And so it was interesting to see like the difference between almost that overthinking state where you're going and looking at all these options and saying, well, let me analyze each one. And this is something I'm so guilty of versus just saying, picking, picking one. And in reality, there was no technical difference between any of the shirts. And so that was pretty interesting. And that's why I started doing this in my closet. And I thought kind of a fun little game to play with yourself to just, you know, see where you're at with your intuition. See if you can just pick up on what your what your body's telling you. Most of us in this space are doing low carb, carnivore, ketovore, something like that. A fantastic way to reconnect with your intuition. And I think one of the most fundamental ways. And I, again, I'm going to talk in specifics more tomorrow for my first week of line diet update. But it's actually incredible. The cleaner you get in this way of eating, how much more I can connect with that feeling. And so these little things that I've been doing, I've noticed that connection getting stronger, the cleaner my diet has been in this way of eating. And I think that has to do with lowered inflammation. I think it has to do with, you know, all the benefits that eating a bunch of meat does. But that's always, you know, the foundation is nutrition first and then we can dig into all this stuff. So boundaries, I've talked about that quite a bit. And specifically, you know, with the, um, excuse me, with like Ellie was saying, the kind of being easily influenced or I, I was really gullible, I guess is a good word for it when I was in like my early 20s and stuff, first kind of got out into the world, I would kind of just believe, I would take people seriously, right? And a lot of times people would be, you know, kind of pushing that line. It's like, well, what can I get away with telling her? Because she'll kind of just believe it kind of thing. And I remember that always bothered me so much. And I spent a lot of time thinking about that. Like, why do I just, you know, why do I think everyone's for real, you know? And I think that's just a part of life. It's just learning that, again, like we've been talking about, some people have bad intentions. Some people are out to blatantly manipulate you to get what they want. And that was part of the, the note here too. It's like the intent to control, the intent to um, only get what the manipulator wants out of the situation versus influence. There's the potential for a win-win, right? There's a potential for a benefit on in both on both sides or in both parties. And there's always an open decision where each person is autonomous and responsible for their own decision, right? Versus in the manipulator category, it's I'm going to do whatever it takes to force you or guilt you or coerce you into making the decision that I want you to make. And I think that's the biggest difference. And that's where you can feel these red flags come up. It's like, this is not my decision. Why did I make that decision? And then you can go back and say, oh, it's because they planted this seed or they tried to get me, they slowly tried to get me to go here or they slowly tried to get me to do that or they told me what I wanted to hear enough time so that I believed them even though they had ulterior motives. And so this is um, where boundaries really comes into play, I think, and something I had to learn over time. And uh, this is, again, what bartending and working in restaurants really helped me with because I met so many different people and experienced so many different personalities and so many different situations. And that really helped me to just get a lot of practice at growing in my assertiveness and putting up boundaries. And so, again, I feel like these could all be different topics or separate individual topics, but um, boundaries, I think, where, where I've grown the most and learned the most is just by trying to write them down. Just by starting with the question, do I have any boundaries? Yes or no? Yes. Do I think I do? Okay. Well, what are they? What relationships do they apply to? What, you know, what are they exactly? And then I just tried to start answering my, all my own questions and writing them out. And then I realized I don't really have very many or they're not well-defined. 
excuse me, and if they're not well defined, then how well am I actually implementing those? How well am I actually abiding by those or using those as kind of that guard, that guardrail or that place between letting somebody cross them, which could potentially be manipulation, right? Or coercion or guilting or whatever these other tactics are. And so really just journaling those out and trying to answer my own questions as like kind of a, a third party would ask them has helped me realize that I did not have very clear defined boundaries. And so I've just worked on thinking of examples of, okay, what's my boundary, you know, in this relationship? What am I comfortable with here? What if someone crosses this line? What should I, what do I want to say? How do I want to communicate that? And as soon as my audible credit rolls over to in this month, I have a book I'm super excited to read about body language because I think, um, and this is something I've studied a little bit, but I definitely want to learn more about and I think is so fascinating because a lot of times boundaries are not just the words you say, it's your body language and it's your energy and it's how you are communicating the words that you're saying. And that is something I learned hugely through bartending specifically because, you know, there's again, this fine line between um, let's say anyone of the opposite sex, right? Who you feel like is maybe b flirting with you. There's this line of playfulness and, and flirtiness that works in that setting because it's right. It makes you more money. It makes you more tips and it, and it entertains the person and it makes the experience fun and playful and positive for both sides. Right. But then it's a very fine line between somebody, let's say on the other side of the bar, pushing it too far in my direction, or me potentially or the person behind the bar leading that person on, right? Thinking that, making them think that I'm way more interested in them than I actually am just to get a bigger tip. You know what I mean? And that happens all the time. And so there, again, like everything else, there's so many variables, there's so many different nuances that come into play here. And that's why this is kind of just a game, right? It's kind of just a game that we're always figuring out we know some of the basic rules, but you're always kind of dancing in this with all the different interactions. And so really that experience, those experiences, that length of time of experiences, what I'm trying to say, um, really taught me that. And it's like, I can judge now where that line is a little bit easier, depending on the person who I'm dealing with, depending on the history that I have with that person, you know, what is the strength of the relationship? What is, you know, what's happened in the past in that relationship? And maybe it's just a random person that sits down at the bar, you know, or is somebody standing in line at the grocery store? Like those are all going to be completely different and have different boundaries, so to speak, depending on who it is and what the situation is. And so unfortunately, I don't feel like there's any straight specific answer for how to set up boundaries and how to maintain them in your entire life all the time. But I think this is a good place to start is just by writing these out and like seeing where you're at with this stuff and going, okay, where, like, what relationships do I struggle with? What social situations do I struggle with? This was a big one for me, like being in big crowds or parties or um, situations where there's a lot of stimulus and there's a lot of people, maybe a lot of people I don't know, that tends to put me into an anxious state of social anxiety, which I struggled with for years and years. And again, working in restaurants helped bring me out of that because it forced me into these uncomfortable situations that I was not comfortable in. And it forced me to figure out how to do it, you know, and it took me a long time. But like in a scenario like that, where there's a lot of people, there's a lot of energy coming in from different people, right? And so that can probably be one of the most challenging, at least for maybe people like me, situations to do this in, right? Because you're dealing with somebody who might be your best friend, and then you're turning around and there's someone you've never met before. And then there's maybe a person who's trying to hit on you. And then there's a person who's like the opposite sex, but they're your best friend. You know what I mean? So like there's there's all this stuff going on and you're, you're constantly trying to do this dance with all these different people. So I guess all I'm trying to get at there is like, unfortunately, there's not a very simple, straightforward answer other than what I always come back to and why I love doing these discussions with you guys is because 
we're always can we can always continue to grow in self awareness. We can always continue to grow in our ability to self regulate, to reflect, to look back and choose how we want to look at our past experiences more as learning uh, things to learn from and learning opportunities to grow versus how I've looked at a lot of things in the past, kind of with a negative mindset, right? Like blaming, resentment, beating myself up, being too hard on myself, all these things. And then anytime I go back to that memory, it's associated with this lower vibrational state. What I've been working really hard to do is to change that and say, okay, yeah, this situation sucked. It did not work out well for me. You know, this ended really bad. I wish it would have gone differently, but you know, things tend to repeat themselves. We tend to find ourselves in cycles. My belief is that we are, um, that there is a higher power that that guides this and that will give us that same opportunity to learn a specific lesson until we learn it. And I think, again, uh, tying this to nutrition, that is why I'm on carnivore again, even though I went off the wagon for a couple of years. It's because I, even though I healed so much and my gut symptoms almost completely went away, like they're not, even at their worst now, they're not nearly as bad as they were before. And I was still drinking a bunch of alcohol the first time. So like the amount of healing that took place was phenomenal, but I didn't learn the entire lesson that I was supposed to learn. I didn't get this pure look at my inner self. I didn't address my addiction. I didn't address my food addiction. I didn't address the emotional needs that I had that were at the root of those addictive behaviors. And that's why I always talk about like what this, why this way of eating means so much to me is because it, that's what gave me the opportunity to go this deep, to really start looking at, oh my gosh, I've never really had any boundaries, you know, or that I can enforce very well that are even very clear to me let me work on that. You know what I mean? And look back at these situations and and see, okay, pick them apart a little bit. Oh, you know what? Here's at this point is probably when I should have known this was not the relationship for me. Or I probably should have seen that this person did not have my best intentions in mind. They weren't just trying to influence me. They were trying to manipulate me. And I should, this is when I should have picked up on that. So now when I see that in the future with a friendship or a relationship or whatever, I'm going to pick up on that faster. I'm going to be more in touch with my intuition. I'm going to trust myself more. I'm going to trust in the higher power more that, you know what? Life is happening for me to grow. Life is happening for me to experience things and learn and become who I really am. It's not happening to me to punish me. It's not happening to me to be a sick person, right? I was sick. I truly believe I was sick for so long so that I could help other people. And I've struggled with anxiety and social anxiety and, you know, negative self-talk and all this crap for so long. I believe that that happened for me to learn from it so that I could help other people. And that's why I'm on here doing YouTube and doing these talks because these conversations with you guys, because I feel like that is my purpose from the suffering that I went through. So sorry, that was kind of a rant. I'm going to see um, what you guys are saying here. But but you know what I mean? So it's it's that whole process of, yes, looking at the specific things like, what are my boundaries? What are the tactics that other people might be using against me? More body language cues, which I'm super excited to learn more about. And that will definitely be influencing some of the topics that we probably talk about coming up, because I think that's super fascinating. And I think that's where I was going with the whole um, restaurant bartending thing, too, is because I wouldn't I wouldn't always have to say, hey, stop, that's crossing the line. It's like you can use like certain words, but then it's how you look at someone or it's the the position of your body or it's just like the energy that you're putting off can communicate more than just the words. And so all this stuff ties together. And I think we have a couple comments here to bring in here. Ellie says, yes, I have a very strong grasp on my intuition, but with a low self-esteem, I did never believe in my gut. Yes, I'm able to really hone in, hone into it now and can guess how long things are going to work out. Yes. See, I love that because we can all, we can all do better with that, right? No matter where we're at, we can all grow a little bit more, grow a little bit more in touch with our intuition. And um, yeah, low self-esteem, I've definitely been there too. And I did not trust my gut. And that's when I look back now on some of these situations, it's like, 
Nia, you knew, you know what I mean? You knew this wasn't right. You knew this wasn't for you, but yet you continued to go down it because you didn't trust yourself. You know, you didn't trust that feeling. And it's scary sometimes, especially as somebody who's hyper rational and hyper like in my head a lot. I want to have an explanation. I want to know why. I want to have like the evidence. You know what I mean? And that's what my healing journeys taught me too, is that you, you know, it's because you don't have 15 studies to back up your opinion doesn't mean you're wrong. You know, <laughs> like N equals one matters too. Eric says, um, very good self-awareness video, experienced manipulation from a narcissistic person for many years. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. It helps to learn what's available from many psychologists who have studied narcissism, Dr. Romani. Yes. And I, I do, um, I definitely get into those, like there's some, I follow some channels that talk about from actual doctors, like psychologists who talk about this kind of stuff. Um, yes. And it's definitely out there and it's, it can be very hard to see um, when you're involved in a situation like that, because a lot of times that manipulative person knows how to build up that trust. They know what you want to hear and they know how you want to hear it and they'll say it or they'll do things that they know please you. You know what I mean? So they, they kind of hook you in and then you don't see what's going on behind the scenes and then they will, it's kind of like gaslighting, you know, like they'll make you, if you bring something up, they'll make you question that it even happened or that you even felt that way or that that's what happened at all. And so it's, it's highly manipulative and terrible. And so again, it's not like we should all see this coming. And if you don't, you, there's something wrong with you. Like not at all. It's just the way I like to try to frame it is, you know, again, learning to trust my gut, learning to trust my intuition and being so connected with that and establishing and knowing what my boundaries are so that I know, okay, someone clearly crossed this and then you have options, right? You can say, you can bring it up and you can say, hey, this is not going to work for me. And so how can we figure out how to do this differently? Or if they keep repeating it, then you know, okay, maybe this person is not does not have my best interests, right? This can be at work. This could be relationships. This can be anywhere. And so, yeah, that, that having that self-awareness component, being firm in your boundary and knowing what those are, and then doing these like little, like I just play these little games. It's like, how can I just build that trust with myself, build that, that ability to trying to think of a better way to say it than repeating what I've just said, but just really connecting on that deep level with what I'm feeling. And a lot of times that takes removing a lot of stimulation from our lives too. And I've talked about this in the past with what I'm doing to try to just create a low stress environment in my life so that I can heal my hormones so that I can kind of, um, just take in more of, and really what's the word I'm looking for? just kind of like multiply the benefits of what this way of eating has done for me. And, um, and that also removing a lot of that stimulation and keeping my environment very low stress helps me to be able to hear that still small voice, you know, or feel that impulse in that first and second chakra, like those root, the first chakra is like the energy center of, of stability and safety and security. Right. And that's our foundation. Um, if we don't feel safe or secure, or, you know, if we feel like our life is in danger, we're going to be fight or flighty all the time. And then none of the other energy centers can align, right? You have to have number one in place. And then number two is like the creative center. And that's, there's like some identity tied into that, but it's, it's creativity. It's um, like that life giving energy. And so that's what starts to give birth to create creative ideas, if I can speak. And then that goes up to solar plexus, right? That's your kind of ego identity um, where you have your self-worth, your self-confidence, your self-esteem, right? So if you have a self-esteem issue, like we were talking about, um, Ellie was mentioning too, and I did in the past, you got to go down, you know, you got to go, okay, what's wrong with the one below it and the one below that? Where am I not feeling safe? Where am I not feeling secure? Where am I not feeling like I can relax and just be who I am? That could be a big red flag right there. If you're around somebody and you're like, I, am I being manipulated? I don't know. Like something feels wrong, but I can't quite decide. Maybe I'm overthinking it like I tend to do. Or maybe, you know, maybe it is just me. Or maybe it is this other person. If you're feeling that sense of 
like, okay, self-worth, low self-esteem, low um, like ability to express yourself confidently, feeling like you can assert your opinion and that person, you know, if any of those things are feeling compromised, then I would go down to the second chakra, you know, like down to that. Um, again, it's like that feeling of expression, that feeling of um, creative, creative ideas, that feeling of connectedness with yourself. And then the first one is the safety and security. So all those, those are just like different ways of talking about the different energies that, that, um, are in our body. Like we are an energetic being and then we put energy out and we receive energy. And so, um, I definitely use that, not metaphor, but that visualization or that, um, that way of thinking about, like energetic chakras to just help me pinpoint things sometimes. Um, Ellie says, I agree that God has put us through hard times so we can now help others. Yeah, I firmly believe that. And I think that's, that's one of the great mysteries and at the same time gifts in life. I think um, so many times, you know, whatever your definition of success is, whatever that means to you, and, and to me, that means finding fulfillment in my purpose, finding fulfillment in what I believe to be, you know, the, the greatest way that I can serve others, serve my family, all these kinds of things. And I think a lot of times for people that comes from a place of, you know, lack or a place of not having something or a place of, um, you know, God forbid, abuse or just things that have happened that did not go your way, pain, physical, you know, like um, health problems, things like that. I think all of those things, if we can kind of flip those and use them to grow and use them to help and serve others, I think there's almost nothing more powerful in the world than that. That's another David Goggins um, idea, kind of, he talks a lot about that, like just flipping flipping those things, like all the terrible things that happened to him when he was a child and throughout his, you know, adolescence, he learned how to take that and turn it into motivation and turn it into drive and passion to um, accomplish the things that he wanted to do and to figure out who he really was and how he can now encourage and inspire so many people to do the same. And so I, I really believe that, that if we can kind of make that reframe about what, you know, our pain in the past and what's happened and use that to inspire and to grow, I think that's incredibly powerful. And I think that's one of the great, great, meaningful um, ways to live life. Um, and so, yeah, thank you for that. So I see we're kind of coming up close to the hour I know like I went off my notebook but most of that stuff was stuff I had written down um but I'm just gonna see if there's anything else that oh I came across this quote completely incidentally like this was a video where um I think I just listened to it last night that and I'd already finished my notes and it's funny how this just came to me but it was just a guy who was walking around the street, just like randomly interviewing people, asking them like what their top success tips were or something like that. And just, it was kind of funny. Like a lot of people turned him down and then a few people stopped and, and gave him some answers. And one, one man said, um, he was talking about how he built his business. And he said about, um, the, the context was, people got to believe in, in you. They have to believe that you believe in what you're doing, you know, and that's how you can positively influence someone. And he said, the more certain person will always influence the less certain person. And I thought that was so interesting, right? Because there's this belief element to, and this certainty element in, um, again, this ties in like with body language and energy and all these other things. If I walk out here and you can tell that I that I really believe what I am saying and I really believe it in a positive way, like this could help you too. And I'm extremely certain if you're maybe less certain about whether it's going to work or not, that is influence, right? I am now influencing you to try whatever it is I'm selling or whatever it is I'm the idea that I'm selling, right? Because it's not just products. It's not just things, it's beliefs, 
it's ideas, it's ways of thinking, right? And we are all influencing each other all the time in that sort of ethereal realm as well. No one Sandy Renee sneaks in. You thought I wasn't going to notice, huh? <laughs> Good morning. Um, and so I just thought that was so funny that that came across my my feed last night after I'd kind of already finished up what I wanted to say on that topic today. But I thought that's so true, right? And you can see that um, everywhere. You can see passion in people's, excuse me, behavior, speech, all this kind of stuff. But then you have that line again, right? Between, um, what's a good example? Kind of like, um, I don't know if this is totally a great example, but like, you know, those MLM things where they have like the people on stage who it's like the people who started it and they got extremely wealthy off of the whole thing, but then the people at the bottom can never actually do it. But they have this big fanfare and the stage and the lights and they bring the cars out and they're wearing ball gowns and like all this crazy stuff is going on. And that that could seem like, wow, these people are very certain, right? But you could also argue that that's a almost blatant form of manipulation too, because in the back of their minds, they know that it's highly unlikely that everybody else in that room is going to experience that same success that they've experienced, right? Because of the structure of that, you know, like, you know, pyramid scheme things. I think technically those are illegal, but then you put a product in and it's like, I was in one of those um, when I was like 20, I think. Uh, what was it called? And I learned so much from that, right? I was like, you know, it was my choice to to get into it. And I actually got a lot of good things out of it like some good, read some good books and stuff. But then when I realized what it was, I was like, oh, this is not for me. And I just got out of it. But I remember going to these events. There was a couple events and it would be like that. Um, Kevin W. Amway. It was called, I think it changed to Amway. I think it was called, um, they had these energy drinks that was like the main product. And everyone was like, look, I'm so hyped up on whatever. The, it was like star something. What was it called? Um, yeah, this was probably, well, almost 20 years ago. Not quite. Maybe like 17 years ago. I think it, but I, I remember looking it up later and I think it, it came up as Amway. So it might have been that. But anyway, you know, it's just like, that's an example of, hey, these people seem very certain about what they're selling. And it's kind of easy to fall for, right? You're like, oh, well, that sounds easy. I can just sell these products and build a downline and I'll be set for life, you know, but then you realize, okay, that's like statistically impossible once you do the math. And so once I did the math and I was like, oh, never mind, this is dumb. But, and their energy drinks weren't good anyway. I didn't like them. But again, so that's kind of where there's always this balance between like the other things we talk about, critical thinking, right? Questioning everything. And that's that dance between being influenced and being manipulated, I think. Quick star, that's what it was. <laughs> yes, one of my friends was part of it. What was the, were the energy drinks? What were they called? They were called like, mm. they had those and um, yep, it was quick star. Yep. And it was hilarious because it was, people would just be chugging these energy drinks all the time, just like, quick start out on those energy drinks. It was crazy. Yep. That's what it was. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, that's just an example of when, when something starts to feel a little bit weird, you should question it and you should, you know, go home, kind of get out of that sphere of influence for a while. That's what I did. And I was like, you know, are these people crazy or am I crazy or is this crazy? Is this okay? And then I was like, I don't think this is for me. And so I just stopped going to the things or whatever. And thankfully I didn't lose any money because I don't think I ever bought anything other than the book list. I read the book list, which I did actually get a lot of good out of. So, you know, anyway, that's what that is. Um, so, okay, well, we're right here on the hour. And um, so I guess we'll just kind of sum it up with, oh, journal prompts. Can't forget the journal prompts. I have three for today. And then um, I will be publishing my Seven, first seven day lion diet update tomorrow, if I can get it edited in time, <clears throat> hopefully. Okay, so journal prompts for today. Let me pull this out so I can 
read them. Um, so think about a time when you felt manipulated by someone or a situation where you felt manipulated. Looking back on that, what could you have done differently to avoid it? And I answered that question myself and I wrote that, you know, I could have asked more questions early on. I could have paid closer attention to the signs and the, the feelings that I was getting about what was about to happen so that I didn't get caught off guard, which I did at the time. So again, this kind of reflects back on, you know, looking at past experiences and trying to learn something from them so we can avoid falling into that same trap again. Number two, and if you're following along in the journal pack, it's your journal prompt sheet. Okay. I'm so excited. And there's, if you want to get it, if, there's a link below. And I just released my goal setting workbook also that goes with that, that live stream we did in the past. There's a link below. And so it takes you through, it's called to the core, um, workbook and it's for goal setting. So you can do it at now for new year's, but you can do it anytime. So those two links are below. If you want to support my work and also get some cool ways to follow along with the live streams or, you know, go through your, your values and connect to what you really want and create habits based on that. Like we talked about in that live stream, which is also linked below. Um, those are down there. Number two, what was it about you at that time? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, number two, when was the last time you changed your mind about something? Um, the last time you changed your mind about something might have been when you were influenced in a positive way, right? And this can happen all the time. This happens to me a lot um, when I talk to Ben. Like, he'll have a different view on something. And he'll always joke. He's like, you always say no first, but then, like, the next day you say, hmm, maybe. Or, and then eventually you say yes, you know, or something like that. Like, I'm definitely open to changing my mind, but I need some time to think about things. And so, like, I just wrote down an example of the last time I changed my mind about something that was kind of something I was pretty firm in how I thought about it. And that's an example of positive influence, right? That's something that we want to be doing with people. We want to be growing. We want to be looking at other people's point of view. We want to be, you know, incorporating that input from our environment into our mindset and our frame of reference for the world. And so, um, you know, question one's kind of reflecting on a time when you wish it wouldn't have happened like that. And question two is like, when was a positive experience when someone changed your mind for the better? You can write about that. Um, and then the last one, number three, how do you want to influence the other people in your life? Whether you're online, social media, family members, friends, coworkers, what kind of influence do you want to have? I think it's good to be intentional about that. And this is a great time of year to think about that too, because um, we all have influence on people, whether we are technically realizing it or not. And so I think about this a lot with my kid, right? Because she's absorbing not just the words I say, but the tone of voice I use, my body language, how I respond to her. And so she's always a great mirror to me of what, you know, what I'm doing well, what I want to continue to do, and what I might want to change or tweak or iterate a little bit on. So um, yeah, I think for how I want to influence others in my life, to ask more questions, I wrote, to think deeper, and to heal holistically. Those are my the ways that I want to inspire and influence others in a positive way. So, okay, those are the journal prompts for this week. Again, um, I'm building a series of workbooks that I think will be fun. A lot of them are going to correlate with some of these live stream topics. And so those are all on my website. And let's see what y'all have to say here. Darren Earp says, have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Looking up here. <sighs> have a great week. Lee Zap. All right. I'm off YouTube ad blockers block. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay. Just catching the end. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Keep up the good work, Neil. The world can use your help. Thank you. I appreciate that. My drop, if, if I can make a drop in the bucket, I will be happy. Uh, no insanity, Renee. Mine was when hubby asked me to marry him and I said no and then changed my mind. We'll be married 39 years this year. That is such a cool example. I love that. I love that. That sounds very romantic and awesome. 39 years is so long. That is, yeah, I think that's becoming, well, I don't know. Is it becoming more rare? 
Sometimes I think that it is, but I don't know the actual statistics on that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Very cool. Okay. Well, thank you everybody so much for being in here today. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Hope you guys all did too. And um, I will throw up a poll this week. My first uh, lion diet update will be tomorrow. And um, what else we have? You guys want to see a beef jerky video? How I make my ground beef jerky? I have that on my list for this month too. So maybe I'll try to get that out this week. We'll see. Um, but have a fantastic week and I'll see you soon. Bye.